Hi, uh, today we're going to talk about the uh, 4G technologies, uh, fourth generation mobile, uh, mobile technologies. Uh, so we're, we're going to talk about uh, the three points. Uh, the first issue, we're talking about uh, what's the concept of the future 4G technologies. And the second issue, we're talking about uh, fundamentally, what's the fundamentally uh, wireless uh, communication series uh, related to, associated to the 4G technologies. And the third issue, we're talking about the future, the SIM card uh, architecture technologies of the uh, 4G technologies. So first issue, we're talking about the, the, what's 4G technologies. Uh, uh, you, uh, everyone knows that 3G has been developed for almost 10 years. We spent a hundred million, hundred billion dollars invested in the in industry. But uh, so far, the 4G development is not so su uh, successful and also satisfactory. And uh, when we look at the technologies, uh, 3G from 2G and 1G uh, from analog to digital, and then increase bandwidth to the 3G. Uh, the, the fundamental problems of the 3G is because in the 3G, we did not fundamentally improve the architecture of the 1G, 2G. Uh, architecture is very important, I mean, sure. If you look at the, the, the 1G, the first generation, which is analog uh, handphone, all the way uh, to the 3G iPhone, the architecture is still very close. Very close architecture is meaning what? Meaning, if you look at the, the handphones, from top to bottom, everything is closed, very architectural. Uh, closed architecture means what? The user cannot do anything if the, if the device becomes out of date. So, and also, if you, the user want to change the standards, uh, uh, the user cannot do anything about that. The only way is just to recycle it and buy a new one. So that's the problem. If you look at the ICT industry, which is information communication technologies, we have three parts, right? Computer, network, and also wireless. Computer industry is, is very open right now. Of course, it's not 100% open, but it's very open right now. It means what? The monitor can be from, from Korea. The, uh, the motherboard can be from China. The processor can be from the from, uh, from, from US. Uh, 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 whatever LCD or uh, the other side can be from Canada. So different parts from different vendors. That's called open architecture. But uh, if uh, uh, network, I mean, network architecture is also very open. I mean, that's why we have Cisco systems. I mean, if you get online, the user get online. You don't have care. You don't have to care about uh, where this goes to. Uh, uh, go to the uh, the, uh, the fiber optical or uh, solid or AT&T network or uh, uh, no no ATM network or uh, uh, satellite network. So the the network is very open. We call open network architecture. But the wireless is very close, very very close. Think about it. From uh, this handphone, this this telephone uh, was invented in nineteen thirty. Is almost like half century ago, but the the telecom industry, the, especially the wireless, is very very close right now. So that's the time we have to we have to change something to make it open. So the open open architecture is going is going to be a very important value assets of the next generation, fourth generation mobile communications. So that's the four G uh, 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 we proposed the open architecture for the four G. Uh, technologies and we call open wireless architecture. It mean, means what? In the future, the handphone uh, architecture will be open. So when you use a change the standards, change the, change the, from one country to another country, whatever, he doesn't have to change the, the handphone's device. He can change, just change the, the external car we mentioned later. Uh, uh, in the future, the, the, the standards can be put in the cards. So uh, a car, a memory car, external car, or SIM car, whatever. So that. The device is itself system is open architecture, we call open wireless architecture. So that's the first issue. The second issue of the future 4G technologies is, is cost effective. I never say it's cheap, but it's, it must be low cost, special efficient, must be special efficient, because special is very limited resource and very expensive. Uh, somebody say 4G is just high speed, uh, 100 meg or uh, one giga. 4G can support high speed, but high speed is not 4G. That's the most important issue in the, in the 4G. Uh, think about it, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, when I was a PhD postdoc in Germany, we already have wireless mobile ATM technologies. ATM is a, a synchronous transport mode. So wireless mobile ATM technologies, we already can support 522 megabits per second 15 years ago. So uh, yes, very well, because for example, uh, 15 years ago, when I was in Berlin, we already have uh, wireless mobile ATM technologies uh, uh, supporting more than 500 meg transmission, we can, we can bring a TV, whatever, in, 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 the, in the terminal, so it's good. But why wireless mobile ATM fail? Because wireless mobile ATM is too expensive and also cost too much spectrum. So 
Cost effective special efficiency is the most important issue for the, for the 4G technologies. So as a conclusion, the 4G technologies in the future must focus two issues. One is open wireless architecture, try to converge a different, different uh, uh, multiple standards into open platform, open wireless, wireless, open wireless architecture platform. So that's the uh, uh, issue. The second issue, the 4G technology must be cost effective and also the special efficient because we are talking about a commercial uh, uh, environment, commercial market. We're not talking about a military, so military market. Uh, so cost effect effective and the special efficiency is very important. The second issue we're talking about what is basically uh, fundamentally what is communication series. As I always say, that 15 years ago in the IGP communication mag uh, magazine, I always say no single radio transmission technology can do both broadband, high speed, and seamless mobility in a commercial environment. No single wireless standards can do everything. Why? Because when you're transmitting very high data rate over a fast fading mobile wireless link in a commercial environment, okay, it doesn't work very well because it requires very high signal over noise rate by the increased receiver bandwidth and a much more spectrum with very low BR, bit L rate, which is very, really hard to implement in a commercial environment. So that's an issue. It's a ther theoretical issue. So if you want to support broadband high-speed transmission and also the seamless mobility in a commercial environment, you have to use multiple wireless standards converge together in an open wireless architecture platform. That's the only solution we can do that. So in the future, we have to converge WiMAX, Wi-Fi, 3G, and uh, 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 whatever other wireless technologies converge together in an open wireless architecture platform. So that's the fundamental serious step. The third issue we're, we're talking about today is, is the future SIM card architecture. You know, what's the most important part of the handphone? Handphone device. Most important part of the handphone device for the operators, for the service providers, is the SIM card. SIM card. Right now, the SIM card uh, carry the user information, account information, whatever information. But in the future, the SIM card can do more, they can carry the, the standards information. So based on an open wireless architecture, different wireless standards can be mapped into open interface parameters. So we bring this open interface parameters into a SIM card, then SIM card can bring the standards. And then in the future, we also can bring, we also can do some uh, 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 supplemental procession, signal procession in the SIM card. So in the future, when you change the standards, when you change the standards, whatever from one country to other countries, whatever there, when you change your standards, you don't have to change your the device. You bring the same device there, you, you change a different SIM card, or you can, you, whatever you call, you can memory card, or uh, uh, you have different names. Uh, you also, I call OWA, open wireless architecture, external card. So when you bring this OWA card into the handphone, the handphone can support the standards, whatever should there. So basically, and the handphone the architecture basically is open, it's like a laptop. When you pull out all the cards and you put in a card, different cards there, laptop can be doing for the computing, called networking, and the procession, and the view procession, everything there. So open architecture can help you change the different standards without changing the, the device. What we, we call uh, one device, one number, one dream in the future, uh, a, a mobile phone, a smartphone. So that's most important for the first generation technologies. That's all, uh, uh, that's we put everything together. We say the future 4G mobile technologies fox two issues. First issue is open wireless architectural platform, including device side and also include the infrastructure side. The second issue is a cost effective, special efficient, the radio transmission technologies. So that's called 4G technologies. That's all of it. Okay. Uh, 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 as time is limited there, so uh, appreciate your time there. Thank you very much.